so Jared Pique got booked early. Mm. And then around, and then the Barcelona goal go down. Around minute 33, he should have been sent off, in my opinion. I, it was mm. one of those late, I don't care tackles. I think it was whistled a, a foul, but it mm. could have very well been a second yellow. Two minutes later, um, Kuman removes him and puts and puts the Yong at the back. Is there anything to read into this? Did, did any of the, I, I haven't read the Catalan press this morning. Did, did, did somebody come out? Did, did he pick up an injury? Or did you get the sense that this was Jared Pique saying, you know what, screw this, like I, I, I've lost it, or it pains me so much what I'm seeing that, you know, momentary lapse of reason. And, and I say this as a really big Jared Pique fan. PK on the bench didn't look like a player who wanted to come off. So I don't think it should be interpreted through, uh, you know, through the lens of this is a player. Well, what did Kuman see then? Did he ask him? Why did you, why, well, why do you Koeman, take him off? So Kuman after the game said it's because he's got a yellow card. Now, it's a 33rd minute, Ronald. But you just right, you I, just I, said I, he should be sent. He could have been sent off for a second yeah, challenge. He the did, manager but, sees that. He and did, if you're but, a manager, you say, I can't keep him on the field any longer. I've got to take him off before you're we go down to 10. You're going to make that call. But, yes, but I'm sorry. You but make I, the call I, after 33 minutes. I, You've just Rob, said it. You just said it. Rob, he should no, have been Rob, sent off. Rob, I think this, this is huge, question, though. This is a question to you, Robbo, from a footballer's point of view. A centre-back anticipates being booked at some time in a game, right? It doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a second one. No. Now, obviously, yesterday is slightly different because, as you say, PK then makes a challenge that could mm. well be the second one. But just because you've been close and you've got away with it, does that necessarily mean that Brett is coming? I mean, does it not feel like well, you're... Because as a manager, the, re the referee... You're, saying, you're, you're the, saying, I don't trust this guy or, or this guy's lost it now. No, you don't trust the referee as well. The referee's probably okay. said to himself, okay. I'm going to let you get away with that one, but the next one, you're going. And that's right. why you take him. And I, I'm doing commentaries all the time, and I'll say, he's got to get him off now before he gets sent off. Time and time again. And right. so many coaches don't do it. You know, Eric Garcia, in the, he got sent off, obviously, in the last game, but he got sent off in a previous game. And he looks like every time he's, okay. he's, he gets a yellow card, he looks like he's going to get another one because he can't run. I, so, I was yeah. I was going to save the why is Eric Garcia playing for Barcelona mm. thing for, for, for later on, mm. but... You said, I think you guys touched upon something really, really important here in, in, in the Kuma and Jared Pique relationship because I, I take on board what you mm. said, right? So you get booked, you know. This guy is hugely experienced. Yep. He's a veteran. He's a leader. Surely as a manager, you know the significance of removing yes. your, mm, your, yes. your, you know. I don't know. I don't know if he was captain in the side, but he is a de facto captain uh, on the night in the, 30, in, in, in the 35th minute. You know the significance of it. But you're taking I mean, a massive gamble if you don't take him off. How? Because, but, 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 but you should only take a massive gamble if you think that some that a screw's come loose in his head and he's going to get himself sent off. That's the only circumstance in which you're taking. Otherwise, you say it's 10 minutes to halftime. I talk to him and I say, Jared, are you okay? Are you in the right frame of mind? I'm sure he's played you're asking, you're most of his asking, career with a yellow you're under card. Pressure. You're, right? you're under pressure in a game. You've got your centre-half who's on a yellow card and maybe should have been sent off. The referee, the next foul he makes, and it only has to be a minor foul, he's going to send him off. I think you, have, you can't... It's not about trusting the player. Sometimes you can't trust the referee. Said, are people Robert, talking about this? Follow-up question mean? to that. Yeah. So, so sorry, Robert. The follow-up question to that is: You say if you think as a manager, mm. you have to grasp that nettle and say, right, I've got to take him off because yeah. this is just too risky. That's the manager's view on it. What's the player's view on it? Does the, the player, player won't like it? it? Of course, he won't like right, it. Exactly. But, so, so, yeah. so when PK is sitting on the bench, from a player's perspective, mm. is PK thinking he doesn't trust me? Yeah, he's he, that's exactly he what he's thinking. He has just hung me out to dry. He, he might well be doing that, but as the manager, you have to make decisions. Yes. You know, and yeah, but, you, but you have to make correct decisions, not but, stupid ones. You're but you've got five down. substitutes now. You've got what? five substitutes now, so you can afford to do it. No, because you don't look. I'm sorry. So you want but to go you, down to ten men. But, you know? Oh, I'm sorry, but, but, but Robbo, when he moved, when, when 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 he turns to the bench, okay, he doesn't have uh, freaking Beckenbauer, Costa coming on. He's got. He, he doesn't even have somebody he trusts enough that he's got to reassemble his team and move Frankie de Jong and turn him into a centre back alongside another, whatever Eric Garcia does for a living. I mean, come another, on, man. Uh, but, another question here. Another question here. At the moment, and quite rightly, because we're analysing the game, we're looking at this from the context of the match itself. Now, I know that a manager should not be thinking beyond the context of the match itself. But the other context of this is, as you started with this question, Gab, this is a Kuman who knows he's in trouble. Not on the pitch, but off it. 
This is a Kuman that knows that the one thing that's holding him up, apart from the fact that it's logistically very difficult to get him, might well be some support from players. And this is Kuman taking a decision that could break the last, if you like, the last ring of protection. Exactly. Mm. And and so so I would like to think a manager doesn't think like that when he makes a big decision. But he must be aware that this could potentially bring consequences beyond whether or not a player gets sent off or beyond whether but or not... You, you also have managers, and I'm not saying Koeman's in this position just yet when you're talking about the, the backing of the players. He might not think he's got the backing of PK at the moment, and he might... In case, sod him, yeah. But he might want to get the sack himself I, I, and get the payoff. You know, he's thinking, I can't take this team any further. I'm not going to resign because I won't get the payoff. If I make some, some big decisions and get the players against me, the, co- the, 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 the president's eventually going to have to make that decision and get rid of me. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I, to me, th- this was a huge call, mm. and I think it's going to have a knock-on effect. And I'd, I'd love if some statistical nerd out there knows this. Um, what happened to Mr. Chip, by the way? Uh, I'd love to know who the last Barcelona player to be sent off for two yellow cards in one half has been in the Champions League game. I, I, I don't know if there's ever been one. There, there probably was. There's probably last year, and I'm forgetting about it, and I look stupid. But, you know, <laughs> seriously, because I, I just think that that you can't wait until halftime to go and assess the situation, I, I just find I just find grotesque, frankly. Mm. Um, There's another element to this. The other element to this, and actually this is the thing that people have picked up on and commented on and criticised uh, Kuman for more than anything else. Forget the fact that you take PK off. Forget the fact that it's early. Forget the fact that PK is a leader. Forget the fact that PK is the person that can possibly break you in terms of the dressing room relationship. There's one other thing. As you say, you look at the bench and you haven't got Beckenbauer coming on. So what happens? You put on Frankie de Jong, you move him to centre... Sorry, you move Frankie de Jong to centre-back. Mm. Frankie de Jong, possibly the one player in that first half who has, if you like, rebelled against the situation, who has created things for you, who has looked like he can play a bit, who has looked like he's making things happen. And so you, to reinforce the part of the pitch that you've just debilitated by taking PK off, even if that decision is right you debilitate mm. the part of the pitch that was working. And that is where the focus has really fallen this morning. Not so much on taking PK off, but the combination of PK off and your best midfielder no Run longer in your midfield. Center half position, yeah. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.